evening students this is manas your friend and tutor the problems that we did the previous two examples were where the cross section of the beam was uniform throughout it was something of this sort a1 a2 both of them same areas so same area moment of inertia so same second moment of area you can say but the problem that we are going to discuss in today's session is slightly different here you will observe that the cross section is going to be different for the first half of the beam and different for the second half of the beam it's something of this sort the areas are not identical anymore so this is going to be a challenge for us how we can effectively calculate slopes and deflection using the conjugate beam method this is going to be fun and i want all of you to watch this video right till the end this is going to be finished in the next 10 minutes or so and uh, here we go let's do it so what is the first step going to be obviously read the problem and these are the values of uh, young's modulus 200 gigapascals area moment of inertia what are you supposed to calculate the slopes at the two supports and the deflection under the load okay it is really no big deal we can do this very easily let me just show this to you assuming that the beam would bend in this fashion this is highly exaggerated by the way this is the slope at a it is this angle that i am talking about theta a again tangent to the elastic curve at point b will give you the slope at point b and the deflection over here the vertical deflection the downward displacement that you see is the deflection at g very well let's begin let's remove these supports and replace them with appropriate reactions here we go now all the forces are vertical in nature since the beam is in equilibrium all of it must be equal to zero upward positive positive negative write them down simplify this is what you get in the same fashion what you can do now is take the moment about point a you are now left with two forces 100 and this rb so this rb is going to be multiplied by 4 whereas this 100 is going to be multiplied by 2 all the distances have been taken with respect to point a okay here it is 100 into a gets you a clockwise moment which is why you see a negative sign whereas this rb multiplied by this distance gives you an anti clockwise moment at a and hence you get a positive sign so you i think i think you all know all of this stuff very well okay simplify this you will get the value of rb as 50 put it over here you can get ra as 50 done let me update now a quick recap what are we doing sir uh, we are calculating slopes and deflection okay what slope and deflection for what sir we are actually calculating the slope and deflection for the real beam please remember now we are interested in making the conjugate beam the shear force this is the shear force for the conjugate beam the shear force for the conjugate beam qualifies as the slope for the real beam please remember this and at the same time the bending moment bending moment for the conjugate beam qualifies as the deflection for the real beam this is the analogy you need to remember this and uh, if you're not sure about it do watch the first lecture where i had introduced you all to the concept of conjugate beam method to watch it okay so uh again the idea is very simple first of all you need to frame you need to construct that conjugate beam and conjugate beam the loading let me just write this very quickly the loading for the conjugate beam is nothing but the m over e i diagram of the real beam okay if you want you can take a screenshot quickly done right that's the concept okay let's move ahead so uh, basically if you want the bending moment at c will be equal to 50 multiplied by 2 that is 100 okay it is a case of sagging bending moment that's why positive upwards upwards every point upwards you can calculate it from here also 50 multiplied by 2 again a case of would bend the beam in this fashion sagging so far so good let me raise all of this let me go ahead and now we'll make the conjugate beam where we are going to put this m diagram okay divided by ei over this beam 
there it is okay so that's your conjugate beam and please notice i don't know whether you noticed or not i made a small change this was the original beam okay you can clearly see i and 2i what i have done i have initially assumed the entire beam to be having a uniform cross section you'll see the difference here it is can you see yes and this is the difference notice later on i am going to make the modification and uh, the bending moment diagram is going to change we'll get to that anyway so far so good now let me let me here also uniform cross section now let me superimpose this and this becomes my loading diagram since bending moment values are positive therefore all the arrows are pointing in the upward direction that is our sign convention upward positive downward negative all okay so far so good now now what's a but you know very well this is i and this is 2i you've assumed it to be constant throughout moment of inertia or area right but it is like this so there has to be changes can you spot the changes <laughs> the idea is that this portion is more stiff uh, if i call this as stiff this is comparatively more stiff or more stiffer let's say this right and you know it is m over ei where is the change happening here no sir nothing is changing between a and c but between c and b there is a change there is a change so all of these values the earlier were 100 by ei now from here to here the values are going to change it is going to be 100 over it is like 100 over 2 into e into here entirely at each and every cross section between c and b the value of area moment of inertia is just a second it is 2i and this becomes 100 over 2 ei that means it is 50 over ei it's that simple let me replace this with 50 over ei okay i think you are now able to relate between these two diagrams it would be appropriate if you can take a screenshot over here also see how the change has taken place uniform cross section these two portions but here you can see the change change happening let's move ahead um this is a triangularly varying load this is a triangularly varying load what we are going to do is we are going to convert this triangularly varying load into an equivalent point load and the same will be repeated here let me explain one of this analysis you know very well area of the triangle is half of base into height so this is very simple half of base is to this is that triangle and this triangle is over here i've recreated the base into height you can see height and base just do the math 100 over ei this is the equivalent point load corresponding to this triangularly varying load or area load and the same goes here but where are we going to put this point load that is a challenge the idea is the point load will be acting at a distance of l by 3 from the right angle and sir where is the right angle the right angle is at c over here the right angle is at c for ac it is this and for cb it is this so 10 2 by 3 from over here 2 by 3 100 over ei 100 over ei 2 by 3 what 50 over ei 50 over ei i'm sure you've now understood the math now let's have fun once this is done let's have fun let me uh now you know uh, these forces are in the upward direction and therefore the reactions will be downward this way okay minus minus plus plus let's enjoy let's just enjoy done simplify we need one more equation right so let's take the moment about a these two forces are going to create anti-clockwise moment at a but this rb will create clockwise moment these two forces are going to create anti-clockwise moment and this will create clockwise moment where at a that is the point okay so 100 over ei let me just just take ei as common and we are going to take care of everything else rb into 4 rb into 4 clockwise moment that's my negative these two forces anti-clockwise moment so 100 over ei multiplied by this distance how much is this sir it is equal to 2 minus 2 by 3 how much is 2 minus 2 by 3 3 to 6 minus 4 uh, 6 minus 2 is 4 by 3 here it is similarly 
then you have this force 50 and you have to take this distance how much is this sir this is going to be 2 plus 2 by 3 so 3 to 6 6 plus 2 is 8 by 3 and here it is very easy calculate for rb this is the value of rb put it over here you are going to get ra done so damn simple let me update ra and rb here it is ra and rb done we'll finish this in the next two to three minutes don't worry sign convention now as i have told you uh the shear forces calculated for conjugate beam qualify as slopes for the real beam and the bending moments for the conjugate beam qualify as deflection for the real sign convention is very simple uh, shear force at a there is nothing to the left up uh, although the shear force at a would be this much only 250 over 3 ai negative value but you if you want you can calculate so you have to consider this portion that is rhs portion of a when you consider the rhs portion of a downward force is positive and upward is negative so this is going to be positive these two are going to be negative let me write them down done okay similarly now let's find the shear force at b i know the magnitude is going to be this much only uh one more thing let me do this calculation first done you can see match these two now for shear force at b let us consider the left hand side portion when you consider the left hand side portion upward is positive these two positive downward is negative negative write them down simplify it this is what you get and finally let's find the bending moment at c again uh, either you can go to the right or you can consider the portion to the left what are we going to do we are going to consider the portion to the r h s so 50 multiplied by 2 by 3 will bend the beam in this fashion it is a case of sagging positive in the same fashion 200 over 3 ei would bend the beam in this fashion it is a case of hogging negative you know perpendicular distance okay on solving this is what you get and yes the problem is almost over uh, all of these correspond to slopes these two correspond to slope whereas this bending moment corresponds to deflection for the real beam and before we start calculation um, this is the value of e what we'll do is everything that we've done till now is in kilo newton and meter hmm? let's maintain uniformity let's convert this into kilo newton per meter square very easy split it up 10 to the power 6 10 to the power 3 uh, that's kilo for you okay done uh, what about area moment of inertia mealy 10 to the power minus 3 minus 12 and minus 4 this is what you have so multiply e with i this is what you get and now we can just plug in the value of of ei at these three locations and enjoy this is what you get you're going to get initially the value in radians and when you multiply this value by 180 over pi you are going to get the corresponding value in degrees right as far as slope is concerned and this will be directly obtained in meters if you want the corresponding value in millimeters multiply by thousand you are going to get the corresponding value in millimeters so yeah that is it and finally finally what i'll do is i am going to draw this elastic curve watch this is the slope at a this is the slope at b okay take a look take a look with respect to the positive x axis this is theta a that's theta a for you similarly once again with respect to the positive x axis this right here is theta b that's theta b for you and over here you have the deflection y c which we have calculated <laughs> okay so students that was all from my side for today i'm sure this kind of content from mechanical and civil engineering is going to help you a lot 
been boosting your confidence uh, not just for the uh, examinations in college but applying them in real life also okay so that was all from my side for today this is manas patnaik signing off take care and have a nice day